What is going on, people? Leo here from Creative Tech Lab. So you're in Final Cut Pro and you're trying to figure out this whole color correction slash color grading thing. Well, hopefully you've watched my last two videos regarding the waveforms and the scopes and the different tools that you can use to adjust your colors, like the color wheels and the different color curves there in the software. And in today's video, we're gonna put all the different elements together so you can color correct like a pro. So if you're new to color correction slash color grading, stick around till the end of the video video so you can learn how to do this and this will be plug-in free so everything that you're going to need is going to already be in the software in Final Cut Pro. Let's get into it. So most people loosely refer to the entire process of taking your image from start to finish as color grading. However, it really breaks down into two main processes, which is color correction and then color grading. See, actual color grading is putting on the final look, but before you get to that stage, you need to make sure that your image is at the right starting point to start giving it the final look. So stick around until the end of the video, and we're gonna show how we're gonna go from something like this to this and we'll go through the whole process here using our scopes tools and everything there. So what is color correction? When we're talking about color correction, we're talking about three main things. Those three things are exposure, contrast, and color balance. Now it's important to get these three things correct before you actually do the grading, which is your look, because one, it gives you a consistent look throughout an entire scene there when you're mixing different clips. Also, once you understand this, you'll be able to get quote unquote cinematic footage out of almost anything that you shoot there. So let's jump into Final Cut Pro here with some examples. This is a shot from a wedding here and this is probably the perfect scenario. I'm running auto white balance here because it was cloudy. The sun kept on coming in and out so it might change there. And I could tell just by looking at the image that it is too much greens in the image. Now as you can see the image is very flat because it's in lag. The first thing I'm going to do here is use the built-in Final Cut Pro conversion LUT. Now you can change the footage to add contrast and saturation yourself. However, Log does have a specific calculation to bring it to Rec 709 or at least as close as possible to that. Link up here to General Undone's video on that. So you do want to use a conversion LUT to get that done. Again, built-in LUTs into Final Cut Pro here. Come over here to the information tab and you come down to camera LUT here. It was shot in S Log 3, S Gamut, and the Gamut was S Gamut Cine there. Boom, if I do that, we already have a good looking image there. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do here is probably to add some contrast to this image here just a little bit. We have the scopes here, you could see it's pretty bright there. Because it was so cloudy, the sky is kind of blown out there just a little bit. That's just something you have to deal with. If I come in here into my color corrections here, the first thing I get is my wheels. I mentioned this in the last video, but you can set your default to whatever you prefer it to be there. I do start with the color wheels. So I drag the shadows down a little bit just to add some contrast there and the highlights just up a little bit. I kind of like where my mid-tones are sitting there. And then as I look at the skin tones here, I can already tell it's a little bit green there. Now what I would do to double check this because it could just be my monitor, I want to use the vector scope to make sure that I'm balancing the image correctly. So I'd come over here to the vector scope. We see these are all the colors that are in the image there. And then I'm gonna come over here, bring up my effects here, and I'm gonna look for a draw mask. And what I want to do here is actually mask out the skin. So, I'm just gonna come here and get a good piece of skin, leaving out the, okay, boom. And now this is just skin here. This is my flesh line right here. And as you could see, it is too green there. So what I'm going to do here now is do another correction. I'm gonna come into the hue saturation curves that we had mentioned in our last video. I'm gonna to go to hue versus hue. I'm gonna take the color picker there and select my wife's skin. That's the point there. And then I'm just gonna push this up and then you could see the line there is now fixed. And now if I take the mask off, let me make this a little bit bigger for you there. And as you could see here, if I change it, it's a subtle change, but look at the skin, how it changes there. And it looks a lot more natural. The skin doesn't look as sick there. And I like to balance my entire image to that to make sure that it is set there. 
And then we could come in here and just add a little bit more contrast if we wanted to with our color curve there. We could just do a standard, let's bring back up the Luma curve here. Get a standard low S curve going here. Just a little bit more contrast in there. That's the Now we're kind of getting a little stylized there. Now you can see there we've added a little bit more contrast into the image there as far as color balance in there. And you can really see that change in the hair there as I flicker that on and off there. And I also kind of just faded out the blacks there just a tad bit there. So just in a few swoops there, we went from this to this to this. And then I added in a little bit more contrast there. Now this is the baseline for your color correction there. Now, if I was gonna add a little bit of a look to this here and give it a slight gray there, what I would come in to do here is come in here, I would first mask out the skin because I don't want to affect the skin here. And we do see that some of the image here is in the same range of the skin tones there, but that is okay. What I'm gonna do here is come into here, let's turn this mask off there. And if I wanted to just push some teal into the entire image there outside of the skin tones there, we're gonna get this nice tealish look, it's gonna cool it down quite a bit there. Um, and then maybe push some orange into the highlights there. It's gonna warm it up quite a bit there. And then also, let me come back here to my hue saturation curve. Turn back on my mask just to be 100% sure there. Come back to the vector scope. Still on that line. And then I'm gonna come back to my hue saturation curve. I'm gonna add just a little bit more saturation into the skin tones there. Just a tad bit. Let's take the mask back off. And then boom. Went from that to that. And we have a nice little look there. And there we go there. And just to give you guys an example of how this looks here, this is another clip from the same wedding party here. So we're starting here in S log. If I go into here, same thing. Do the lot. Boom, that kind of brings it to Rec 709. I'm gonna come in here and copy, and then I'm gonna special paste here, just Shift Command V. Retime there, and, and then this clip just went from this to this, all in one fail swoop there. If I just play that back there again for you, it looks pretty amazing and that's why you want to color balance the clip there because you can then copy and paste the similar scenes there and get a consistent look throughout different things and then when you go ahead and put your little bit of a look on it there whether you're using an extreme LUT or you're getting into more advanced tools which is a little bit different from this video you could get a quick orange and teal look into your image there but first with color correction there. So that is how you color correct in Final Cut Pro there. If you like this video, definitely check out the other two videos if you haven't seen that one. Also, if you like this particular look here, check out the next video that's gonna be right here on how to get a similar talking head shot like this. I'm gonna go through the lighting, the setup, and how I just drag and drop my effects onto the footage there to quickly color grade and shoot YouTube videos quicker like this. I'll see you over there in that next video. Peace.